Welcome to another Tactical Fly Fisher on the Water tutorial. I'm your host, Devin Olson. I guess that's what you called me anyway. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna, we, I've got a specific tip I'm gonna tell you about. So, uh, a, a couple weeks ago, I did a live Facebook live session with Marshall uh, from Midcurrent. And one of the things that I was asked afterwards was for some tips on how to land large fish on light tippet. And we've done that quite a bit today already. Uh, this is a river that I haven't fished in 15 years and uh, so I put on some 7x not thinking we were going to run into some very large fish but so far we've run into some pretty darn large fish and I haven't lost any of them yet. So let's talk about how uh, you, you do that. So I have a pretty uh, simple sort of formula that I follow whenever I, I go to fight fish and you may have to adjust it if you got obstructions and you know like snags, boulders or just heavy current that you have to work around. Uh, so you can't you know, do this like a robot every time, but this is my typical process for hurrying to land fish as quickly and, and easily uh, and simply as possible. So first things first, when I'm making drifts, it doesn't matter wh whether I'm fishing dry flies, dry dropper, you know, uh, nymphing, whatever, I'm gonna set the hook to my downstream side. So if I'm fishing the river right here, I'm setting the hook this way, to my downstream shoulder. And with, when I'm urinimping, all it takes is just a quick little wrist flick. That's all I need to do. It doesn't have to be a big hook set or anything like that. Now, I've got the fish on, it's the hook penetrated. I'm gonna move that rod upstream. So I wanna get it so that my force, my leverage is moving that fish upstream so it'll come above me. If you stay to your downstream angle or if you just set the hook and go straight up in the air, that fish is gonna get out in the current, the current's gonna take it, and it's gonna say, sayonara, see you later, thank you for the fly, because I just broke you off. Or you'll, you'll just take forever getting the fish landed. But you'll have a much quicker and easier time if you'll bring that rod upstream. And then once, once that rod is there, I look at the fish. If the fish is directly out from me here, I'm gonna put my rod five to 10 degrees past perpendicular to the fish. So if I draw a line from me to the fish, I put the butt section of the rod five to 10 degrees past perpendicular to that fish. So let's look at it this way. If the camera is the fish, then I have the rod perpendicular to the camera right now. And if I go five to 10 degrees past that, that's the angle that I want. And the reason why is if I'm here or even less than that, I have tension on the fish, but I don't have leverage. And I can't tell you how many times I've been fighting a fish out in the river and I look at my rod angle and it's just been bulldogging me, bulldogging me forever, not moving. And I look and I'm just sitting at right about 90 and I go five to 10 degrees past that and the fish breaks out of the current and comes towards me. Cause you'd really do, you, by turning that butt section away, it forces leverage away from where that fish is at. So I, I get that angle, I maintain it and I fight that fish all the way around until it comes upstream of me here. So I don't wanna be landing the fish downstream of me. I don't wanna really even be landing it out to the side. I wanna fight that fish all the way around. And that might seem counterintuitive because you want the shortest distance to you, but it's much easier to make that net job at the end if the fish is upstream. So once I've done that, the fish is upstream, right up in this area and it's lost enough energy. I lift my right arm back above my head and I bend my left knee and bring the net to the fish. So I'm basically just spreading my wings here with a bent knee that gets the net down under the water and the leverage up in the air. But that's the only time really at this last sequence at the end that I put my rod straight up in the air. The rest of the time I'm using side angles and leverage to get the fish where I want to go. So let's go put it into practice. All right, I've got this nice run in front of me here. Big deep drop, little pinch point that just makes it scour out, but there's also a boulder at the top of it that has a nice slow seam down the center with fast current on both sides. Lots of variation here and, and water to cover. Um, there are some fish rising out here. So what I went ahead and did, I grabbed a rod that I have already rigged up with a Euro leader, but with a dry dropper instead of just a single nymph. And we're gonna give that a go first. We'll try and catch those fish that are up high um, and then go deep. But uh, along the way, each fish that I hook, I'll try and go through that process of how I'm landing the fish. So let me put a couple casts close here just to begin with first. 
Uh, Mike, who's here with us, he's already caught four fish off of this part of the seam, so I don't know how many there's gonna be left, but we'll at least give it a quick go in case. But the ones that I've seen rising, well, there's one. Okay, so I set downstream, I move my rod upstream, and I'm keeping it there. And I'm, I have it lifted a little bit to begin with because there's a shallow spot right there that I have to keep the fish over. But now that it's out deeper, I'm dropping the rod angle, trying to get it to come towards the bank. Now that it's coming towards the bank, I gotta lift it up just a little bit. And it's upstream of me. Lift the rod behind my head, extend that net, and there it is, it's in the net. Pretty simple formula. And a really nice cutty. Whoops. Well, see you later. <laughs> Let's get another one. I uh, landed and missed a fish up close to me here after Mike had already got four in this little bit and went several casts without fish. So we're gonna try and hit some of these fish that are out here rising in the center. Oh, yeah, that was pretty close to where I was at. <laughs> There's a fish. Okay, I set downstream. Now, what's different about how I fish, fight fish compared to what you might have normally been taught? If I just go straight upstream like this, what happened? The fish went directly downstream of me. And I've got tension on the fish, but look, I lost it. And the fish stayed downstream of me the entire time. And I can't tell you how many guide trips I've been by or people that um, I've seen try and teach people to, to catch fish. The minute they hook fish, they say, rod tip up, rod tip up, rod tip up. And they've just put it straight up in the air. And that gets you tension and shock absorption a little bit, especially if you have it high enough, but it doesn't direct the fish anywhere. It, it just can do whatever it want, wants. It doesn't get directed to where it's ideal for you to net the fish. So instead, we're gonna go through that process again of bringing the fish back upstream. So instead of putting the, the rod just straight up in the air or to my downstream shoulder, I'm going to make sure that I fight the fish to my upstream shoulder. There's a fish. Okay, I set downstream. Now I move the rod upstream. And then you see how low the rod is. The fish is there. I'm five degrees past perpendicular to the fish with my, the butt section of my rod. And you can see I'm, I'm now moving it. I'm keeping that angle as the fish comes around. So I just kind of keep that same angle. Wherever the fish goes, I follow it with the butt section of the rod. Now it's upstream of me. I lift behind me, extend the net, and he's in. Then I got another nice cutthroat here. But I got the fish upstream of me and I didn't lose it like I did that last fish because I went through that process of using rod angles that put him there. On the last fish before this that I had lost, boy, really pretty cutthroat. Thank you, fish. On the last fish that I lost, I put my rod straight up in the air, and instead of the fish coming this way, it just went straight downstream. He's just sitting there, sunning himself, recovering. It's nice to watch him go. <laughs> oh man, that's a pretty fish. Um, so instead of going, instead of going straight up in the air, I went up. Right? Let's do it again. There was one across from me here. And it took my dry fly. Okay, so I set the hook. Now, back to the straight up in the air thing that we have all heard many times before. What else does that do? Besides just letting the fish go downstream of you, where does the leverage put the fish? Up to the surface, like that. If you wanna lose a fish, there's no better way to lose a fish than just to bring it to the top because that's the fastest area of the water column. So it's going to have the most help from the velocity of the current that way. But also that's when they get up on top and they do that spin and they end up spitting the hook. So if I put my rod low like this, that allows the fish to get lower in the column where the speed of the river is lower too. And it's easier for me to bring the fish upstream that way. Boy, that's a pretty cutthroat. So that's one more reason to avoid the straight up in the air and put it upstream have that correct angle. Let me get this All right, fly. so we've pulled a few fish out of here talking about the different 
parts of, of fighting and landing the fish and, and why I do things the way that I do. Well, let's just hurry and give you one last summary. See if I can put one more fish on the board real quick and uh, go through that sequence once again. I've got a fish that had been rising over here. Let's see if I can get him to eat. All right, so I've set the hook downstream. I'm moving it back upstream. Now that my rod is low and upstream, I'm looking at the fish, putting my rod nine or uh, five to 10 degrees past perpendicular to it, so the fish is right there. I'm angled slightly back towards the bank. And now I'm just maintaining that angle, following the fish, even wherever it goes in the current. So if it goes down like that, I move the rod with it. And then as it comes back up, I keep moving the rod in towards the bank to maintain that angle. It's now upstream of me, so I lift it back towards me and fish is in the net. So that's the quick sequence of how I go about fighting fish. It's a typical formula I use and I really only deviate from it if I've got boulders or obstructions that I need to fight around. And if it's a really big fish, I just try and do the same thing and, and uh, be careful about putting too much pressure on the tippet. And if I need to, I will step downstream with it to keep the fish even or upstream with me. Another nice cutthroat here. Really pretty. See you later. Thanks for watching this tactical fly fisher on the water tutorial. I hope that it helps you out and that a few of the tips uh, put some more fish in your net. And while you're at it, if you did like the video, please give us that thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that next time we put up a video, you'll get a notification letting you know. And also, if, show some extra support, come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com. We'll help you out with your tying and fly fishing gear needs. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.